Hi, I'm Professor David Whitcomb, a physician scientist who's dedicated his career to understanding and treating pancreatic diseases. I'd like to talk to you today about an exciting new international collaboration that is dedicated to improving the way we look at pancreatic diseases. Specifically, I'm going to focus on an article published in Pancreatology in the spring of 2016 entitled Chronic Pancreatitis, an International Draft Consensus Proposal for a New Mechanistic Definition. Now, the reason for this paper is that the way we have defined and diagnosed chronic pancreatitis in the past is seriously and irreversibly flawed. It must be changed. The problem is that we cannot make the diagnosis until after irreversible damage has occurred. This is often when the patient has been complaining and suffering from the consequences of early chronic pancreatitis for five or six years before there is evidence of irreversible change. The old definitions suggest that chronic pancreatitis is a continuing inflammatory disease of the pancreas that's characterized by irreversible morphologic changes, typically causing pain and or permanent loss of function. So this focuses on abnormal morphology or the shape of the pancreas in order to make a diagnosis, making early diagnosis impossible. We were challenged by the European Pancreas Club to come up with a better diagnosis and better definition. And so a group of us representing the United States, Europe, India, and Japan worked for several years to come to a consensus on what a definition should be and how we can better structure our approach so that an early diagnosis and effective treatment can be employed. This is exactly what we need. What we recognized is that the characteristics of end-stage disease are very well defined, and they include pancreatic atrophy, fibrosis, pain syndromes, duct distortion and strictures, calcifications, pancreatic exocrine insufficiency with maldigestion and steatorrhea, which is oil in the stool, and pancreatic endocrine dysfunction, recognized as diabetes mellitus, and changes in the pancreas that can lead to pancreatic cancer. But these are later uh, di diagnoses and doesn't really help us early on to manage this disease. What we had to do is understand what is the essence of chronic pancreatitis. And a new definition was agreed upon. We agreed that chronic pancreatitis is a pathologic fibroinflammatory syndrome of the pancreas in individuals with genetic, environmental, and or other risk factors who develop persistent pathologic responses to parenchymal injury or stress. What does this mean? Well, first of all, a syndrome is a group of signs and symptoms that come together in order to define a disease. If you have one symptom, that is not a syndrome. If you have pain with no ever other evidence of pancreatic disease, that is a pain syndrome that is not chronic pancreatitis. And so several things have to be present in order to make a diagnosis. And so this is important to understand what is a syndrome. Secondly, we recognize that inflammation is the most important feature, but usually the inflammation uh, is associated with fibrosis, but not in every case. However, it is usually typified by some type of abnormal fibrosis. The third thing is that not everybody develops chronic pancreatitis. Patients who have injury to their pancreas have something called acute pancreatitis, where the injury causes elevation of amylase and lipase in the bloodstream, and image, uh, CT image changes suggested of inflammation, and a very characteristic sharp pain, often radiating to the back, and causing nausea, which is sudden in onset. And this syndrome usually lasts for three or four days and then resolves. 
Chronic pancreatitis is different because after injury has occurred, it doesn't go back to normal. Something goes wrong and the evidence of inflammation and an abnormal response to the regeneration and healing occurs in some people, but not others. In fact, it doesn't even happen in the same way between people with pancreatic disease. Some develop very rapid fibrosis, others don't. Some develop diabetes mellitus, others don't. Some develop a severe pain syndrome, others don't. Some people develop cancer later on in life, others don't. And some develop pancreatic exocrine insufficiency with maldigestion and major nutritional problems, and yet others don't. And so we need to understand what's going on in the individual patient, recognizing that in some people, one or two systems have a completely abnormal response leading to this syndrome. And this new definition sets the groundwork for us to understand that. We also recognize that chronic pancreatitis has the word chronic in it. And chronic means that the signs and symptoms of disease are lasting longer than is expected. And so there is a time element involved. And the time element is important because we're also interested in understanding which patients have the disease progressing rapidly compared to others who develop it more slowly. These are the things we want to understand. This paper and video are presented to generate an international debate and consensus on the central issue of defining chronic pancreatitis. The medical journal Pancreatology, the official journal of the International Association of Pancreatology, has set up a special discussion site for comments and opportunities to join the conversation. In addition, letters to the editor of Pancreatology or commentaries of 500 words or less are also welcome.